Hey everyone, it's the Photo Techie. I hope you're all doing well. So yesterday I uploaded a video on the manual calibration for games at G7SC. Unfortunately, I missed a step in the calibration process. Thanks to Box of Squid's comment, uh, I realized what I had done. You see, I've been working on a video talking about basically stick drift and my experience, and I've been testing a lot of controllers. So controllers with over six years worth of game time, controllers that have been in storage for 10 years from you know the original date. And then I've been testing a lot of different methods of uh, calibrating controllers, you know, uh, how Powerade does it, how PDP do it, and I've been opening them and stuff. So when I shot this video yesterday, I showed the process of the Powerade calibration and game says is a bit different. The moment I read his comment, I knew exactly what I had done. Uh, so I'm reshooting the video now. Uh, the funny thing is I have done this calibration, like trying to change the, the feel of the stick so many times before. So that's why I, the moment I read his comment, I was like, oh my days, how can I do this? But please accept my apology. Uh, and uh, so in this video, I'll show you, you know, the manual calibration and the testing. So just to let you know, I'm doing it on the Xbox Series X, but you can do this uh, on the PC is the same process. First thing you want to do is we want to test our controller, you know, how it's performing. So Gamepad Test is a really good site that you can do that. You can do that on the Series X. Just go to the Edge browser to the website. And um, uh, what we want to do is so here the browser is open. If you press the menu button, we go to the game controls. Now my Gamepad is there. We want to test if we can reach the maximum values uh, of the stick. So this one, I've purposely basically just to show you what a wrong calibration would look like. I can't reach the maximum values on the corners uh, and even the diagonals are out. And so that it's not reaching that. Uh, to test the, you can, you know, and the left stick is actually reaching all the, uh, the values correctly. Uh, you can do this by testing the circularity error and uh, just make sure that you are in the circular profile on the controller. Cause like I've mentioned, you know, you can do raw mode and stuff, but for this one, just keep it in the circular profile and uh, do the circularity test and you will see what I mean is going on here. And we see the stick is not calibrated properly, the right one. So the way we do the manual calibration is in the unplugged state of the controller, we need to press and hold the uh, view, Xbox and menu buttons in and then plug the cable in. So when we do that, keep holding uh, the buttons in the LED light will start flashing. Now you can let them go. Press A, the LED will switch off and your mic mute button LED will stay on. This is the calibration mode. In this basically uh, mode, we need to press the triggers in three times slowly. And after that, you need to press the, you need to rotate the sticks three times. I do them individually. Uh, you can do them together if you want. So I just do them clockwise and um, if you have any control freaks or any thumb grips or whatever is on, just make sure you take those off. Now, if you press A, if the LED comes on, that means the process was okay. If the LED don't come back on, do the same thing again. You have to rotate the sticks three times, press the um, triggers in. Disconnect and reconnect the controller and the calibration basically should be done. I really don't like this USB port, honestly. Okay. So the controller should come up. Yeah, he's gone to a different um, tab. All right, so here it is. And if I go into the game controls, you will see now the sticks will do the proper circularity test. And if I go into raw mode, we'll be able to see all the four uh, basically corners uh, having that software raw mode in there as well. That's what you want to test. The other thing you want to test is when you're holding the stick out, it's not fluctuating. It stays where you are pushing it to. This is very important because it's happened to me before when I was trying to, uh, in the past, you know, change the feel of the stick. So you can change how to, like I showed the, you know, the wrong calibration. The way I did that was is I basically used the face plate without um, the anti-friction ring. So I, on my G7, I just took that off, put the face plate on, and uh, it didn't, you know, the calibration was not going all the way out. And you can do, you can even take the completely sticks off and do it and it's gonna be like even less register. So there are ways of like changing this calibration, changing the active area of the stick. Uh, and I've done that in the past many times, trying to, you know, get a different feel from this controller. 
But yeah, this is what you need to be seeing that it's working correctly and now it is. So yeah, that seems to be all fine. Uh, triggers is another thing. So a lot of people having issues with the triggers as well. So I'll just quickly show you my settings for the triggers. Uh, so I'll do that in the Games or Nexus uh, app. So in the what I do with the triggers is I keep the minimum to seven and the maximum to 90 and then I have the hair trigger toggle on. Now the problem with me is I can't do the little press early, you know how the hair trigger works. I'm always pushing it all the way down and I'm pressing it all the way down. So hair triggers, when you toggle them on, they, they work within these parameters. Uh, so if I, let's say, if I reduce the left one to, uh, you know, a lot less, so I bring it down to, um, let's say 25, okay? Now the hair trigger is only going to work within the seven and 25. You see, I'll, if I let it go, it's not going to register. So if I rapidly press them, you see how much the right one is doing and the left one is not. So this is just how I keep it, and um, it's it works perfectly for me. Uh, I do miss trigger stops, like it's just, you know, uh, for me, I, I can't do that little press. Uh, so I go all the way down and I sort of press towards the end. But that's just how I'm keeping them. Uh, and uh, if you are having issues with the triggers, maybe before you do the calibration, try these numbers. So seven and 90, hit, you know, and then do your manual calibration. Uh, hopefully this, uh, sort of like you know resolves your trigger uh, problems one thing i would recommend is all your profiles so this is what i do i make sure that all the settings are the same unfortunately it's just something that i felt like okay i didn't want to it's just to me it was feeling like okay is it going through like different settings at times or whatever so i've just made sure all my triggers are the same just for the testing purposes of this video i changed the uh, the second profile to circular mode but i keep all my profiles the sticks to raw mode zero and hundred with the new update because in the new update we are reaching the hundred percent value a little bit before so there is some day so it's basically in line with the normal g7 now before i remember i was trying to make the circle smaller that's why i was you know doing the so many different sort of calibrations uh, but now yeah it sort of reaches the hundred percent just like the g7 and we have a little bit of dead space after it reaches the hundred percent so we don't need to uh, you know do all those different methods and stuff so if you keep all the profiles the same that's what works best for me yeah and uh, the, the same thing with the triggers i'm just keeping them in all of the profiles the same settings i'm just going to show you now quickly some call of duty settings that i use uh, so hopefully they can help you out as well okay so in call of duty what i do is um, my sensitivities are uh, 16 16 and 1.6 for ads uh, and um, for testing you know how what sort of sensitivity you need i keep the aim assist off uh, and uh, i use the linear response curve for whatever reason for me the dynamic don't work but i think that's because of my screen setup and the input lag i have with my screen and uh, you might find that dynamic works best for you but for me you know with my setup i think linear works best but like i said it's personal preference uh, my dead zones are uh, 0 0.02 a minimum for the left 0 0.03 for the right and i keep the left stick at uh, 0.80 right with the new update because you know like i mentioned it's reaching 100 before so i keep that maximum in the past i did mention that you can reduce that but i'm not doing that now uh, so uh, the way i test it so i'm using currently because i'm testing a controller so i'm using precision rings at the moment uh, so uh, that's why my sensitivity is higher because i'm working on the eso uh, but without the precision rings my sensitivity are lower like 14 14 and 1.5 ads but the way I test the settings is basically just make sure that you feel connected to your aim. So with the aim assist off, jumping and make sure that your reticle, you can bring the reticle to the, uh, the targets. If it's not coming, if it's off, you can reduce, you know, if it's overshooting too much, you can reduce it. If you're not getting there, then you can, you know, um, increase the sensitivity. But that's the basically idea that you can, you know, bring your aim to them without the aim assist. Uh, and you can sort of follow them um, every time you know when you're jumping you're rotating your stick you can do a full rotation um, and you can stop uh, the stick uh, you know uh, to the targets that's just my way of testing um, uh, the aiming uh, with the triggers um, like i said uh, you know the settings that i keep so i can easily uh, you know keep uh, the, uh, the the triggers pressing uh, repeatedly towards the end of the stick and that's just a, sort of like you know my way of uh, doing it with my settings 
But in Call of Duty, uh, the only thing I change for the triggers is, is usually 0 0.13. I just made it to 0 0.10, 0 0.10. Uh, so yeah, those are just like my methods of testing it and stuff. Uh, you know, depending on the game and your setup, you might feel something differently. But yeah, definitely try it out um, with your, so, so I don't keep, you see, I have a little bit of a drift. I prefer that. Uh, so I know that there are no dead zones the moment I'm doing something, it's uh, basically it's taking effect. Uh, and uh, so that's why I disable the minimum dead zones like a zero in games and nexus. Uh, and in Call of Duty, I keep it where I have a little bit. It's just, uh, it feels much more, you see, stops. So it only happens uh, uh, sometimes. So that's just like my preference. Um, again, guys, uh, sorry about the video yesterday. Uh, I, you know, <laughs> the, the mistake I made. Uh, it wasn't basically the calibration was not taking in. Uh, so yeah, this is, uh, if you're having issues, try these methods. I do hope uh, that, you know, these, uh, uh, you know, this way resolves your issue, whatever is happening with your controller. If not, then I have to say definitely reach out to games that they are really good at replying um, and, uh, you know, resolving the issue. I'm sure um, the calibration should fix uh, most of the issues after the update that people are having. Uh, it's, uh, I don't think the controllers will have to be sent back or anything like that. But yeah, thanks a lot to everyone who subscribed. Uh, Box of Sweet, thank you so much, bro, um, for, you know, I think you've saved headache, not just for me, for a lot of other people as well. Uh, and guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was useful. If you have any more questions or anything like that, please do leave me a comment. Uh, and uh, hopefully I'll catch you in one of, in one of my other videos. Bye for now.